Most readers will be familiar with Aldous Huxley's vision of a dystopia future, brave new world. Indeed, my contemporaries and I often find ourselves observing that this or that latest invention could have come straight out of Huxley's nightmare vision. Given the reaction against the ill effects of globalization by those who have been left behind but not left out of electoral and referendum polling booths it was a clever idea of the British economist Stephen Deking to produce a book earlier this year entitled Grave New World. The D distinguishes him from the best-selling novelist Stephen King, although I gather that the former is occasionally asked to sign copies of the latter's thrillers. Well. This book is a different sort of thriller. Its subtitle warns of the end of globalization, the return of history. Other economists and politicians take the existence of the globalized economy as a fact, and not something that can be reversed, only, it is hoped, modified to work better for those who lost out. But this is certainly a forcefully argued book. Be that as it may what particularly intrigued me on a rereading were the topical and poignant references to the implications of you know what breaks it, if it is not stopped, and King's references to the vision of Huxley's contemporary George Orwell. King warns, as the US loses its appetite for supporting the global institutions that have established the rules of the game. It is not impossible to imagine that the 21st century will increasingly be characterized by 1984-style superpower rivalry, with Oceania dominated by the US, Eurasia by Russia and East Asia by China. What would happen to Western Europe if Brexit went ahead? King speculates about the re-emergence of the old fault lines. In this context he asks opponents of the European Union to explain how a divided Europe would more easily cope with a nervous Russian bear next door, particularly if Washington becomes increasingly isolationist. These are deep waters. Of more immediate concern is the damage being wreaked already by the mere prospect of Brexit. While the British government fools around, Michel Barnier continues to play by the book. He never, to my knowledge, threatened that Britain would be punished that story was typical of the fake news favoured by Brexiters. But he did say there would be consequences, and they are now piling up. Cherry picking and having your cake and eating it are not on the menu, and never have been. The short-term consequences of Brexit were exaggerated by George Osborne when he was still at the Treasury. The Chancellor who was so proud of handing budget forecasts over to the Independent Office for Budget Responsibility did not apply this discipline to forecasts of the referendum's immediate impact. The result was that the Brexiters could claim that, with the exception of the forecasts for the pound a swift and large devaluation the Treasury's forecasts were misleading, and that the immediate damage was not as bad as the more excitable Remainers had predicted. However, these effects occur with time lags, and the damage is beginning to show.